Hello, everybody. Thank you. And welcome to the Jim Baker Show. We are so excited to have you with us today. We are, you do not want to miss one minute. We are thrilled that in just a few minutes, we are going to have back with us Emma Stark. She is incredible. We had Emma with us several months ago, and oh boy, did you respond and you <laughs> loved to listen and hear from this great woman of God, this great prophet that God has called for such a time as this. And you know, you guys, I was just thinking about mm. real quick. By the way, Jim, he I told him today he just needs to take a day off. He is really um, kind of going through a transition and, and health-wise, and we're, he's continuing to heal, as you've yes. seen him, as we broke ground for the yes. Voice of the Prophet yes. studio yes. Wow. on his birthday. So yes. amazing. I mean, this guy's been going, going, going throughout the whole holiday season, and we kept having show, you know, show after show after show, yes. amazing guests and all that, and then broke ground on his actual birthday. So amazing yeah. that he he was just so excited and we are we are so excited about this new network and yeah. and this network is for people like we're going to have day for That's emma stark to give her the platform so that she can preach to the whole entire world mm -hmm. and um as far as voice of the prophets uh television network goes the new network we have so many ways for people to help be a part of this. Yesterday was a real exciting day while we were taping. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, and little Lori was on the set with yes. us. And yeah. God awesome. just spoke to her and, and just said, you know, you are not to miss out while she was driving mm. over here to do the show. And don't miss out. Don't miss out on getting in and getting to be a part of this voice yeah. of the uh, prophets, this network. Mm -hmm. And wasn't that exciting? Absolutely. All of a sudden she just started saying, the Lord spoke to my husband and I that yes. we're to be a part of this, mm -hmm. we're to sow into right. this, and Amen. I want to be the very first one yes. to do that Amen. this year. That's and right. she was. Yes, and we are seeing, you know, for us, I told mom, I said, we just felt the Holy Spirit yes. just came into our midst. Yes. And we knew that the Holy Spirit was here because the Lord has been you know, even as a family, as yeah. a ministry, you know, everything that we went through in mm -hmm. 2020, mm -hmm. you know, it affected the entire world. But what it did to this ministry is it has completely transformed our thinking. It really has. You know, I literally told dad, I said, my thinking mm -hmm. will never be the same. The faith that God literally downpoured on me and he taught me how to truly trust him, how right. to truly have faith in him. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I told Mondo this, I said, the biggest thing that I learned and it all began, I'm going to tell you this, I am so excited about today. You do not want to miss the woman of God that is on this show That's right. because she has something for you. Yes. She has something for you. I believe that she does mm -hmm. because she, when God brought her on this show, yeah. she imparted, and I don't even think she realized, you know, <laughs> through the true. Holy Spirit, yeah. what was imparted into my spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the That's book, powerful. The Prophetic Warrior, it yes. changed my life. Mm -hmm. It changed my thinking. It, it changed did. how I viewed God. That's right. And it, it empowered me the way I saw myself, the way that God would see me. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you today what we are about to hear. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss it. You can't yeah. miss it because it is the now message. It is for right now. It and sure you have is. to hear it. The church has to hear yeah. this message of what we are about to enter into. Mm -hmm. But this is the time. But the Lord spoke to me and he mm -hmm. said, Marisola, don't look to your left when all hell was breaking loose around us yes. and everything. And as Emma prophesied, she saw that spirit of Leviathan mm -hmm. literally around us and squeezing us. And the jaws were literally trying to suffocate us. Mm -hmm. And God literally said, he's like, Marisola, I don't want you to look to your left. I don't want you to look to your right. I want you to look ahead. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes on me. Do not worry what other people are doing. Right. Don't worry about what other ministries are doing. I want you to do wow. what I have called this ministry to do. Amen. And I will do the rest. Absolutely. And mom, yes. that's exactly what happened. That's was true. God did the seed. rest. There was a prophetic seed that was planted that day. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I was teaching my kids. Yeah. Listen, I don't care what you're going through right now. There was a prophetic word that little Lori released yes. to you Amen. yesterday. And that is called don't miss out. Yes. Don't Amen. miss out. 
Our father, your yeah. husband, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. has taught us one thing is don't mm-hmm. miss God. That's it. When everybody else wants to take a vacation, God is on the move. When everyone <laughs> wants to retire, God mm-hmm. is on the move. Mm-hmm. God, listen, God is not a respecter of person or time. Right. But yesterday, there was a prophetic word released yesterday, and I hope that you get involved yes. because there's a moment in time that when God moves, you got to find yourself in that moment. Mm-hmm. And yesterday, teaching my kids, we were uh, at the dinner table mm-hmm. after we ate dinner, we mm-hmm. had family devotion. And I brought my seed that I talked about yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I was so moved by the pictures you shared with me yesterday of your family. Mm -hmm. And this is for you, for every family and my wife and my two kids. And we said, and this is my seat as a family. I want to give to you to sow into the vision of the prophets, the hall of the prophets network, because I believe in this scripture right here, Philippians two, three, this is what God gave me. And this is for you. Don't do anything from selfish ambition Mm -hmm. or from a cheap desire to boast, Mm -hmm. but be humble towards one another, always considering others better than yourselves Mm -hmm. and look out for one another's interests, not just for your own. Mm -hmm. And ended with this scripture yesterday. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Praise God. And this seed After we finished praying for it, and the kid said, Dad, we believe on the halls of the prophets. Yes studio that grandma and grandpa are building yeah and they are so precious so mondo brought in to not only did you bring in for your whole family the seed yeah. for you, that you and beth have sown into the ministry as jim and i did yesterday you know when your family gets involved and so then you know that god is on the move yeah. and they, they see all the good the bad and the ugly yeah. when you're doing ministry work and um i was so moved when a little, little lori that oh. uh, she kind of just broke open the floodgates and don't mm-hmm. miss out and I was like, I don't want to miss out on this. And then Jim's like, and I don't want to miss out on this. And Mondo and Marisela and and John and Beth. And so, and then it was the sweetest thing. And we're going to get to Emma in just a second here. But the sweetest thing. So Mondo walked into the studio this morning. He said, Grandma, I got to give you these. Meaning these are from Mila Mateo. I, I tell you, I didn't see them. I didn't read them. I didn't know what was in them. Mila and Mateo are 10 years old, and these are Mondo and Beth's kids, our grandchildren. And so I, I opened up this letter. This is just right now before we were starting the broadcast. And I opened up, and this is from, this one's from Mateo. So sweet. I just love him. Uh, Grandpa Jim and Grandma Lori, I'm wanting to give my $3, this is their own money, to go to the Hall of the Prophet studio. And the reason why I'm giving $3 is, is for the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Love, Mateo. Now, if you don't think God's not going to multiply and bless this $3 out of their own money that they do their chores for and all that, he does. God honors that. And then Mila, so precious, Mila. So then she writes, Dear Grandpa Jim and Grandma Lori, I want to give $7 to the Hall of the Prophets because it's the Lord's number, and I thought it was the right thing to do. I love you both. Love, Mila. And I said, Guy Mondo, literally, I held this up. I said, if you don't think that the Lord's not going to honor that, and you teach him in this way. You know what I did yesterday is what Dad has done for us. I casted the vision to my wife and my two kids about what we're doing here at Morningside. And then we prayed. Yes. Father, I pray for yes. everyone watching right now. Right. That are getting ready to write a check, that yes. are getting ready Thank to you, make Father. a commitment and sow a seed we for pray. their family's legacy, for their vision. Yes. Father, I pray in the name in of the Jesus, Jesus that that word today will be released right Love now. Lord that they will join the Prophets oh, Network Club to sow a seed that will change generations to come. 
We agree in Jesus' name right, right now. And there's so many ways, real quick, Nana, can you just share the different yes. ways to, you don't want to miss That's out. Right. I think we should yes. almost have an offer called Don't, don't miss, miss Out. out. Yes. Yes. Little Lori started something <laughs> yesterday that I think I'm going to take with me until the Lord takes me home. Yeah, and that's right. We have an $81 share. offer, and that's in honor of Dad's 81st birthday for the Hall of the Prophets. That's $81 love gift, and this is how you can be a part as well. And we want to, we always want to send gifts back. That's yes. Dad's heart. Oh, he always says, always. I want to send something, but these are reminders. They are. Every time you touch it, you know, we're going to be sending you the PTL Voice of the Prophets mug, mm -hmm. and we've been drinking out of them for months, and Dad said, that's a reminder. Every morning, pray for mm -hmm. the Voice of the Prophets. That's pray right. for the prophets who will be in that Hall of Prophets studio. Mm -hmm. We also have the Hall of the Prophets $500 donation, and that's a love gift that you can sow towards the Hall of Prophets studio. That's $500, mm -hmm. and you'll receive one of the PTL Voice of the Prophets mug, and then we're going to send you this beautiful blanket, and we're I just going it. it here for yes. you to see. It's the PTL Voice of the Prophets blanket. It's absolutely beautiful. And cozy. And cozy, <laughs> yes. It's and a $1,000 donation yeah. to the ministry, and that's a sowing of the seed and saying, Lord, you know, Dad had this idea. He said, I, I want every single one of you, when you give, send in your prayer request. Yes. We want to put, you know, I Do love it. how creative that's, you know, when God has given you a visionary, he gives you creativity that mm -hmm. comes with it. That's but right. the Lord spoke to him and said, I want every person who sows a seed into the hall of the prophets. Mm -hmm. As we, you saw us, we broke the ground and we are believing by faith that God is going to provide and he's going to allow us to lay that foundation. And when we do, when we lay that foundation, it will happen. Oh, it will. When we do it, we will be laying Bible, the word. Mm -hmm. The word will be put into the ground, mm -hmm. but we also want to add your prayer request, sure whatever do. it is that you're believing God for. We want to add that into the foundation. Imagine I, you know, I had this moment. I said, every prophet that will enter, imagine the blessing that they will be mm -hmm. casting forward and they will be praying over these these prayer requests that yeah. you have brought forth. Right. It's going to be in the ground, in the foundation. So, so that's a thousand dollar PTL Hall of Prophets gold member. And you'll receive two of the PTL Voice mm -hmm. of the Prophets mugs, mm -hmm. along with two of the PTL Voice of the Prophets blanket. That's right. You know, and though, like I said, it's not about the gifts, but we want to give you something back in return that's as right. a remembrance, as a reminder that every time you put that blanket around you, pray mm -hmm. for the prophets. Amen. Man. Every time you hold that mug, pray for the prophets. They need our prayers more than ever in the days that we're living in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I love Amos 3, 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his purpose to his servants, the prophets. Yes, and we're about ready to hear. Get Buckle up, everybody. Buckle Get up, ready. Yes. We are about ready to hear from now. I, I, we consider her in our hearts, our dear friend, yes. Emma Stark, who is the co-leader with her husband, David, of the Glasgow Prophetic Center and the Global Prophetic Alliance. Emma is an Irish prophet known around the world for her authenticity authority, which I love, and authenticity. She is the core leader of the British Isles Council of Prophets, mm -hmm. author of The Prophetic Warrior and Freedom from Fear. Emma is world-renowned deliverance minister, prophetic voice, and leader of GPC's Emerging Prophet mentoring program. Yes. I love that. And she is a fifth generation Bible teacher. Wow. Welcome back, teacher. Welcome back to our show. We're so excited. Mm -hmm. And to our broadcast, Emma Stark. It's great yes. to have you all the way from Scotland. Yes. Well, thank you so much for that warm welcome. And I do feel very knitted together in my heart with you guys. It is absolutely freezing here in Scotland, but the Celtic warrior blessing is intense and warm. Can I just say, before you ask me any questions or we go any further, my spirit is on fire. The Holy Spirit within me is doing literal somersaults. If it was appropriate, my friends, I would be running on the spot right now because of the weight of the glory of God all over your voice of the prophets and your hall of the prophets. And when you said the word breaking grind, I could hear this cheer in the heavenly realms and I could 
feel the joy of God himself. And I could see the angels rushing to that land that you've just broken ground on. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say this, I will make a covenant with you like I made with Abraham that is not just for you who are alive, but is for many generations. And the spirit of the Lord says, I will weave a capability for legacy in this project, says God, and you will raise generations of prophets that will even go forth to secure the future of America, even after those who are alive are in the grave. And the spirit of the Lord says, I am putting a specific gift in the midst of this project. And the Lord says, it is the ability to bear the intimidation of the enemy and not to be overwhelmed. And the spirit of the Lord says, you will also have a new level of authority for I am giving you teeth says the Lord, that you may chew my word afresh and release a new level of revelation from a new building. And the Lord says, I have given you a mantle to raise pure prophets, not agendered prophets. And the angels around that project, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I could just close my eyes and stay in that visionary state, guys, because the angels who are there building and blessing and with blueprints. And I just want to say, if you've not got behind this, get behind this project. God is all over it. Wow. 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 Powerful. Wow. Amen. We received that word yes. and we're so grateful. Father. Holy Spirit speaking that word through you, Emma. And, and we are looking forward to the day when you were able, we're all, you're in lockdown and this whole world's somewhat locked down. You're able to travel across yes, that pond and you Amen. are, you step foot into that prophet steel. You're going to see that and you're going to, it's going to be an amazing moment. We will have you here. It's going to be so exciting yes, you, when that day comes because it's coming and, mm -hmm. and, and it always does. And yes. it's amazing to see. Um, and Emma, so what, what's God doing in the prophetic right now at this time? Well, it's a massive, it's a massively important time, isn't it, on planet Earth right now. And I feel like the Lord has said to me this, that in 2020, you and I saw a massive disruption to our activity. We saw a disruption to our day-to-day -day life. And of course, that brought a lot of problems with it, a lot of challenges, a lot of learnings. But the Lord says this, in 2021, it will not just be your activity that is disrupted, but I am calling it the year of the disruption of structure. That's different from the disruption of activity. And we are entering days where God is going to destroy the structure that man has built, and he is going to release building anointings to build the structure of the kingdom instead. Now, I really wish I could tell you, oh, let's high five each other and say it's going to be sweet and joyful and easy. I think that would be a lie. I think we have to acknowledge that God is allowing a chaos to continue because the structure that is around so much of our lives and particularly how we do church has got to be changed. That's a very important word. Yes. I think people need to really take that word and take it and, and listen to what that what Emma just said, because I, I told, am full of. I'm personally in full agreement of that with that word, because that's the word from the Holy Spirit. Are we entering into a time of spiritual warfare, Emma? Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I think we have to be those who pray and say, God, I don't want a passive mindset. I don't want a civilian mindset. You know, lay hands on your own heads. I mean, you can even do it as you watch this right now and say, God, would you give me a mindset for military strategy? This is a time uh, to engage in taking out some enemy right now. And God has given you the authority to do it. You are more battle ready than you think. God did not take you through what he took you through to have you ill equipped. You are ready to take out some powers of darkness.
I think that's a powerful word, mm. what you just said, that we are more battle ready than what yes. we think. Yes. I mean, we really are. When you think about what you've gone through in life, people, when you think about what what you come through, you are. You're a little bit more ready than you give yourself credit for, than you give God credit for. That's a good word. When you were with us the last time, Emma, and we talked about this just briefly earlier, but you talked with us about the spirit of, Le of Leviathan. Now you're concerned about another spirit that seems to be operating in the world, the spirit of Jezebel's daughter. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Now, Jezebel's daughter, Jezebel and Ahab's daughter, is called Ataliah. Some of you may know that word or that name, Ataliah. Now, Ataliah is in scripture a couple of times. She's in 2 Kings and she's also in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 22. Now, what's important about Ataliah, apart from the fact that she's got a fairly grim, you know, family lineage, is that she is a, a notorious murderer and that she actually murders her grandchildren it, she takes them out of planet earth by you know a savage brutal blow because she wants power she takes the throne from her own grandchildren I mean how horrific is that and so this is a spirit of viciousness it's bitter it's revengeful it's jealous but here is what I want you to know about it. She works with this power dynamic to kill those who should be leading. She's politically motivated to get you out of the power and the influence that you should have. She stops you from being where you should be. This is a massively significant deal because God, I believe, is re-blessing and remantling pioneers to go again with building anointings, but it is Ataliah who will rise up to try to remove you from your leadership and your place of influence authority and authority. So, I mean, she's, it's very nasty. That wow. is incredible. I'm just looking this up right now as you're speaking. And I'm like, yep, sure enough, there it is. Open it up for yourselves, people, and check this out in Second Chronicles 22. And I don't think we've taught enough about that spirit before. And it's amazing that you've recognized that spirit, in my personal opinion, um, Emma. And we can't allow that spirit to operate in... And we're not going to allow that spirit That's to right. operate, are yes. we, Maricela? That's right. Not in, in this ministry, Jesus. in the name of Jesus. And I just wanted to mention real quick yes. before we go on, if you'll mention Emma's. Yes, that's right. We have a brand new teaching. This is a one DVD with three teachings. I can't tell you, I watched the teachings. I couldn't write fast enough. <laughs> I'm literally writing as fast as I possibly could the message that you are going to be receiving mm -hmm. through the Arise and Overcome offer. This is a $30 donation nation that includes the shipping and handling. Yeah. It's three teachings in this DVD. So we have one for a $30 donation. Right. We also have three. We're, you know, this is a message, mom. We always say, you gotta, you can't just keep this for yourself. That's right. You have to get it out. You if do. you love people, That's if you have right. people that you're trying to minister to, yeah, use the prophets to minister to mm -hmm. them. So we have the three of the Arise and Overcome mm -hmm. DVD teachings. That's a $55 donation, which includes shipping and handling. Handling, and better yet, the Baker's Dozen, yeah. that's 13 missionaries out there. Amen. Rise up. This is it. This is our time right now. Rise up, missionaries. 13 for a $100 donation to the ministry. But I'm telling you, this is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Kimberly, our producer over there, her and I were on the phone last night, and we're just, <laughs> I said, did you catch this? Did you get that? No, did you hear that? <laughs> and we were just, you know, but it's that's so what it's good. all about. That is what this ministry is doing. We are bringing the voice of the prophets right. to bring the message for now. Amen. So good. And we also, we have Emma's book, The Prophetic yes. Warrior. Yes. And you can receive that for $20. If you missed out on, That's you don't want to miss out on this it. book. If you missed out last time Emma was on, or maybe you just start watching, you've just started watching the uh, broadcast for the first time. This is powerful. powerful. Listen, I, one of my best friends called me who is very well known. 
if I gave it your name, her name, you would know her. And um, she texted me. She said, oh, my goodness, Lori, because I sent her this book. I told you I do the friends and family offer. I do do it, believe me. And I sent her this book because she lives in another state. And she texted me back. She said, I She has seen it all. She's been around it all. She's heard it all. She's been in the greatest of ministries and she, and seen the behind this. She said, I've never read anything more powerful. So if you missed out on this last time, get your hands on this, this time. And that's for $20 donation to the ministry, which includes shipping and handling Emma's book, The Prophetic Warrior. Okay, Emma, I have a question for you. I'm so intrigued to find the answer out. You said that recently the Lord showed you a room in heaven you've never seen before. Would you please tell us about that? Yes, absolutely. And it's quite common, as you know, for prophets to be caught up in the spirit realm. And, you know, you kind of get used to the viewing platforms in heaven or the business of the throne room. But suddenly God showed me the door of a new room. And I knew we'd come to uh, a really weighty, significant place in the heavenlies. And the Lord said to me, Emma, this is the archive room. And the Lord was lifting up entire, in fact, there was lots of angels working with him, entire church structures. They were lifting up frameworks. They were lifting up scaffoldings that have been around us for years, the kind of the traditions that you and I actually have derived quite a lot of comfort from. And God was putting them into this archive room and he was putting them on a shelf and he stamped them and he said, redundant. And it was so forceful, like we're not going to be able to get some of these things out. Not that we want things in our lives that God has said are redundant, but I want us to understand in that this is a time for such a cataclysmic level of change that we've got to start to pray and say, God, make me malleable. God, make me flexible. God, make me one who is on your side and not on the side of just orthodoxy or just tradition or just familiar, repetitive, scaffolding, structural comforts, because God is changing things so quickly quickly that we are actually prophesying that we're going to live through days they're going to be like a thousand years so great is the change that's going to come now what took my breath away was that god then set on the door of that archive room a guardian protective angel a little bit like we would read in scripture guarded eden and the lord is saying you will not be able to get these things out And what actually, I mean, it took my breath away was that there were some truths that the Lord said, that's not a truth. That's a tradition. You hold that as a truth. But Emma, it's not a truth. It's not in my scripture. It's a tradition. And I'm going to strip even some traditions off you that are not biblically orientated. And then what shocked me even more, uh, Laurie, was that I saw faces And I even saw, and give me grace in this, I saw Martin Luther's face go into that archive room and God saying some of the things, hear me, some of the things that he brought to the earth, I'm calling redundant. Now, let me tell you which ones. It's really important we're clear about this because he did some amazing things. He set the structure of our church services 500 years ago. And that was opening prayer, some worship, uh, a Bible reading, teaching, some more worship and communion. And we have had that structure of a church service for 500 years. And we never once thought to question it. And we never once thought that actually that was a tradition rather than something of the kingdom of God. And so God says, well, I'm disrupting your structure. I'm even disrupting some of the rhythms and the flows of how you meet together. This is massive. Yes. It mm. really is massive because in 2020, we actually, you know, our structure has been has been ripped from us in many ways. When you think about it, not being able to go to church, not gathering together. It's that's really been different for all of us. I know it's been different for you, hasn't it, Emma? 
Yeah, I mean, massively. I was just saying, actually, before we came on there to, to you guys, that we've not been in a, um, I've not been in a live church service since last March. They've actually been um, largely banned here in the British Isles. And we're down to only um, five people being allowed to attend uh, a wedding. So, yeah, it's we're back in another lockdown here in Britain with only essential shops open. It's been really, really brutal. Yeah, it's very, you know, how, so how do you, it's, ve it's very brittle, but um, how, how will this structural change affect our churches then? I think what the Lord is doing is he's taking us back to foundations and foundations of reading the word, foundations of hosting his presence, and he's clearing a wrong sort of building because we have, I think it's accidental because of course I love the church and you love the church and we need to be very careful in these kind of prophetic words that we're not unduly critical. I think we accidentally stumbled into an entertainment culture that has ruled the church. And I heard the Lord say this, you have been entertained by my spirit rather than hosting it. You have been entertained by my presence rather than be transformed by it. You have been entertained by worship rather than engaged in it. You have been entertained by preaching rather than learning from it. And I heard the Lord say this, I am not a God of performance and I will not stand on your stage. You are not theater goers. And the spirit of the Lord says, largely what you have built is not how my kingdom works. And so I actually believe that God is going to grow within us an authenticity for encounter that we have lacked for maybe a generation. That is so powerful, and it is so true. He's, I don't believe the Lord is thrilled with the entertainment business <laughs> in church, and um, it's been going on a long time, and mm. I think it's pretty astounding what you just ministered to us and taught us. Mm. You just gave us a good teaching about, and, and it, like you said, God give us the grace, but and, you know, people have grace on us. But, you know, Martin Luther, to think that 500 years ago, mm -hmm. that's powerful. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that the church, the way the church does the church, does church is still the way we do it today. Mm -hmm. And um, I, as you were saying that, I found it refreshing when I was, I was, um, went to my church, Phoenix First Assembly in Phoenix, Arizona, and my pastor, Tommy Barnett, there were times, and this is a it was a mega church, and um, this is where God raised me up spiritually. But there were times when pastor would come in, and here's everybody, you know, getting ready for church as usual. But he would just change it up, and he would ha have a salvation call right at the very beginning because that's how the Holy Spirit would lead him. And I was always refreshed by that, right, Mondo? Absolutely. That's how pastor would do it, no, and so. Um, I think, you know, there's things like that that God wants to do now. Mm -hmm. What is the difference, Emma, between then tradition and truth? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I, I have to say, I, I come from five generations of Bible teachers. We, we love the Word and we love the Spirit. And I think we have tragically uh, allowed our culture to almost become like scripture to us. And I, I mean, our church culture, our church traditions. And uh, I think we, we love a certain sort of worship music, or we love a certain era of time in the church, or we have lovely memories of when God met us in the past. And we can camp out and build there, and it becomes tradition rather than a love of being stretched by actual biblical truth. And I do feel like God is going to give a voracious appetite back to his body for uh, the Bible and for the truth that's there. And actually, he's going to get, this is a horrible thing, I actually think he's going to give us a vomiting anointing. That's not why anybody tuned in today, is it? But I, th <laughs> I think God's going to give a vomiting anointing that we may be able to spit out 
just like we read in Revelation 3, the lukewarm or the traditional things that are just our culture rather than the, the fresh thing that God is doing. Can I tell you this? When I travel, uh, and we do a lot, as you guys do too, I often ask congregations, how many of you struggle with Bible reading? And if you get them in an honest frame of mind, it can be about 80%, 80 to 90%, and I'm being kind there, who struggle with scripture and struggle with reading the word of God. And usually they say to me, they either fall asleep um, or, you know, uh, it's just too much. They don't, they feel like they don't understand it. Like something comes over them where it seems to be confusing. I, I am perpetually staggered uh, how difficult the, uh, a Bible reading has become. And that is an enemy thing. That is not that the Bible is difficult or that it's sleep inducing. In fact, quite the opposite. It's living and active. It's alive. And so I really feel that the enemy's done a number on us and made the Bible difficult. So we just love our traditions all the more rather than be challenged by the fresh truth of the word of God. I think we have to be honest and say, God, I need a breakthrough in Bible reading. Many of you watching will be going, oh, it's not just me. I thought it was just me. And I just released to you an ability to love truth and to fall out of love with your traditions afresh again. Wow. And now is the perfect time for that. You know, Maricela just said that would, as you were ministering, yes. she just looked over at me. She said, that was me. Yes. Tell mm -hmm. us that about that me. real quick. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've shared it on the show, but I, you know, I, exactly what Emma just said, I couldn't understand it. My husband would be like reading it. And I'm like, I don't know what I, I, this confusion. I don't understand what God's trying to say here, mm -hmm. but I knew the Lord actually revealed to me. He says that Satan, he's robbing you mm -hmm. from my word. He's robbing you from spending time with you, with me. Right. He's taking what belongs to me mm -hmm. and he's robbing you of it. That's right. You know, and I literally, the moment that God, I just said, Lord, I want these blinders. God, remove mm -hmm. the blinders, remove mm -hmm. the confusion, mm -hmm. remove it. And I I started to come against it and I pushed through. Yes. And literally one day, Psalms 23 was the scripture that God gave me. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I read it. It was just me by myself. I woke up. I was so determined. And that's the key. Mm -hmm. I said, I refuse to allow the enemy to rob me of this. Right. And I became so determined to understand it. Mm -hmm. And I woke up one morning, I read Psalms 23, and I started writing next to it. God literally, the Holy Spirit downloaded to me. He made the word simple. Mm -hmm. He literally translated for me the words. Mm -hmm. And from that day, those chains were broken. No, no. I Praise broke God. the chain because mm -hmm. that's what the enemy comes to do. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But to rob you of the, um, of the time that you mm -hmm. get to experience with God. Wow. You know, and that's why this message is yeah. so important. That's Right. You're just getting, I just want you to know, you're getting just a skim yeah. of what, <laughs> just a tiny taste of what Emma is teaching on these DVD mm -hmm. teachings. Mom, do you realize she, Emma, I want to thank you yeah. because you spent your time, you taped these, you filmed this message just for the viewers of the Jim Baker That's show. That's right. I was so just amazed that you would do that, that yeah, you would take your time. Too. But this is a message for you. This is important. What Emma is teaching us, yes. this is the word of the Lord for Amen. 2021. Amen. We will move into this direction. And it, God just keeps saying, watch and see, yeah. watch Absolutely. and see, wait and see what I'm about to do. Yeah. But you have to get this message yes. because it will transform your life. Mm -hmm. Praise May God. I add something to that? Because mm -hmm. it's so important sure. what you just said, Maricela, because when you look at our culture, and if you want to look at it as a Christian culture, it's the culture right now is having a turmoil between truth and tradition. And I believe what's happened is that you prevented a spiritual uh, abortion to mm -hmm. take place mm -hmm. in your life. Right. Because when God is getting ready to birth something new in you, mm -hmm. the convulsions mm -hmm. of truth and tradition begin to fight one another. Mm -hmm. And the birthing, the birthing is either going to take place or you're going to pre-abort God's plan for your life. Mm -hmm. Tradition will always abort God's plan. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Tradition mm -hmm. will always abort God's plan. Truth will always birth 
a new prayer life. Amen. We'll Thank always you, birth Lord. what the Bible said. Blessed is the man that hungers and thirsts. Listen, that is the power that we're fighting for right now. And the mm -hmm. church is being seduced. I mean, when you begin to talk about the daughter of Jezebel, yeah. right. the spirit of seduction that is taking place inside of the church by allowing us to continue to walk in tradition. Mm -hmm. I don't think you and I would be here right now mm -hmm. if Pastor Tommy and Pastor Matthew mm -hmm would walk in tradition. Oh, absolutely. It revolutionized the church world mm -hmm. when the Dream Center was birthed it, it really out did. of truth yeah. message that Pastor Tommy preached. Yeah. And here you have this Caucasian young yes. pretty boy yeah. walking down the streets of downtown LA, breaking every traditional church mm -hmm. membership uh, criteria they have you have. And he, believed in a, <laughs> he, he believed in a young man named Armando yes. de la Vega, and we call him Mondo, <laughs> but he believed in, in you, Mondo, and because of that, you sit here today and with your faithfulness, and it's very exciting to see what God wants to do, and I mm. want to agree with what um, Emma said. Like, you know, I think that all of a sudden you're watching and you're taking a big breath and going, wait, I'm not the only yeah, one that has struggled right. with yeah. Bible reading. Yes. You know, that we pray that right now that yes. you will have such a hunger and such a thirst right yes. now in Jesus' name yes. to read the word, to get the truth from the word of God for yourself, yes, what he Father. has for you this very day, even right now as you're hearing my voice, as you're hearing Emma's voice, that mm. right now that that even the, yes. the chains would be broken yes, and and just those blinders would be ripped off of your eyes that you can see like Maricela did um, mm. Psalm 23 and it just became it's like the the word him God yes. translated the word Amen. him God yes. Yes. and it's just so beautiful that he wants to do that we're nobody special mm -hmm. we just said yes and we want more yes. we want Amen. more of him ourselves yes. and even as we're in this new year we want more of him and that things would become fresh and anew Emma anything you want to add on to that Yes, I think it's really important that uh, that we have read the Bible in massive chunks. I think there's that verse, uh, that thought that says, you know, a verse a day keeps the devil at bay. Well, I just want to say, uh, no, no, you know, it's not a verse a day keeps the devil at bay. I think we need to read massive portions of scripture. And I want to bless you to be able to do that. It's so important. Why? I think I think when we had the pandemic, uh, which is obviously is still in, and the crisis that we're walking through, had we known scripture better, we would have been less shaken. I think we got so into this, God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good, narrow, 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 that we've actually forgot all the myriad of other biblical facets of who God is. Yes, he is good. And yes, he is love. But actually, Let's take something like Psalm 7, verse 11, and it says that God is angry every day. And suddenly we're going, oh, I don't like that verse. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. But actually, it's truth and it's in scripture. And we would have gone, oh, hang on a minute. You know, I understand that God is about justice. I understand that maybe he's about judgment too. I understand that there is a wrath and a fiery holiness in him. And so my reading of scripture helps me understand that actually on occasions, God's okay with me being a little bit uncomfortable, that God actually has a value system that is based on eternity rather than am I happy in this particular two minute window. And so this scripture reading is not just, oh, you must read your Bible. It is me saying to you as a prophet, the way you're going to navigate change, the way you're going to be successful as structure is shaken, the way you're going to come into successive victories is to read the word so that you know the personality of God and you're not shaken when he shakes things. I love it what you just said to read chunks of the word of God, to have 
you know, bunches of it and get to know his personality. Yeah, this this pandemic really shouldn't have shaken us up. When you listen to my husband, when you listen to Jim, you guys and people, the, yes. Jim's your friend. OK, when you if you've been around a long time and listen to Jim Baker, listen, yeah. he would have told you this. This wasn't something to shake us up with. That's right. Yeah, right, honey. Yes. I, and my That's son right. knows our Absolutely. kids know. I mean, this is, you know, he's a revelation teacher. Yeah. He's a preacher. He's a teacher, all that. But I will tell you, he it's like we shouldn't be shooken up over this or the things That's to come. Right. We oh. actually I think we got excited. I know that sounds strange, <laughs> but we got excited because we said, look, mom, look at the word is true. Yes. Yeah, the amen. word, everything that Jesus prophesied and said, spoke that would happen before his return. Yeah. Amen. We're living. We're watching it. We're it's seeing so, it. But that's his mercy. Yeah. That's his grace he is that we would us. know that we would know the signs. Mm -hmm. We would be able to see what God is doing that's to not right. shake us. Wow, this is so powerful, Emma. So I have another question for you. Can you explain the denominational spirit? Is 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 it for us or against us or this do not? Can you just explain this spirit to us? Yes, thank you for that question because I really we we again I want to say we love church and we actually love some denominational churches. I don't know about you, but I grew up Baptist, and I think if you cut me. I still bleed Baptist a little bit, although I'm, I'm a charismatic Baptist. I don't know what you name me then. Uh, but uh, I want to differentiate between denominational churches and something called the denominational spirit or demon. That's a bad thing. The denominational demon. And I heard the Lord say this, that the denominational demon, the denominational spirit will no longer in 2021 be the dominant ruling demon force that oversees life in the church. Now, that is a massive word. In all my years of prophesying, I don't know that I've ever prophesied anything as massive as that. Because the Lord says, I'm going to break the wrong hold of the denominational demons off my people. Now, let me unpack for you what that denominational demon is, that those denominational spirits are. They are a marrying together of the religious spirit of control and the political spirit that likes wars and sides and in fighting. And so what God is doing is he's saying that the church has been largely infiltrated and run by the religious sense of control limitation. I will shut you down. You will not be the full version of yourself alongside the political spirit that says, hate one another hate one another. And I feel like what Satan has done for years is has so he has sown seeds of civil war into the church and that we have been tending and watering and nurturing those seeds so that when you go onto any social media platform, we, the people of God, look like a civil war has exploded in the midst of us. That's the political spirit. And God's said to me that that religious and that political spirit in its union became the ruling denominational spirit. And the Lord says this, it has hindered my people for years. It has stopped rabid hunger for my presence. It has given us a high value of criticism. It has given us a high value to limit one another. It has made us suspicious of each other. It has made us defensive. And the denominational spirit has produced a capping on church advancement and progress for years. Now, when I explain that, you can understand why, why when I say to you, it's the most significant thing I think I've ever prophesied, that God says it will no longer rule the day uh, any longer in our churches in 2021. There is a war in the heavenlies to liberate the people of God. Yeah. Amen. amen. We say a big Thank amen to that right now. You can yes. hear my solo clapping. Yes. And amen. that is a powerful you real, you unpack that beautifully exactly what that spirit is all about. And boy, it is I, I we could just I could just preach on that with you all day. We could we'll help people understand that 
then, but you know, with all this uncertainty and, and everything that we've been going through, and even with this, this denominational spirit, will we see joy this year in 2021, Emma? Yeah, yes, absolutely. It's good to get to something nice to talk about, isn't it? I rarely have I started the year and the prophets that I look after in the British Isles and all of us carrying such um, heavy words and such challenging words. And we realize that God is doing an awful lot of uh, rebuilding and reframing, but there is joy to be had. And the spirit of God was really clear uh, with me that there would be a level of joy joy and a level of dancing. Now, I have a sneaky suspicion that many of us dance in the bedroom or in the kitchen, but the Lord says there will be explosive joy and dancing in the corporate gathering. And the Lord says, we're going to dance with delight, even in the midst of of uncertain times. And right now, that is just coming over your life as you listen to this, because a joy that you have lacked is coming back to you. It's infusing right down into the core of your being. Can you feel it as you watch this? It's not just that you're observing me in the spirit or observing the team there. It is that you are having a spiritual transaction happen in your life right now, that the joy of the Lord is returning is your strength and some of you just need to put your hands up in the air and say I receive it because the Lord says a joy is going to come because there's going to be the ability for you to celebrate a right smashing of the structures of man and the Lord says it's an unusual joy that you will be able to cheer your way through 2021 at the toppling of the enemy that's going to happen this year. Yes, Ooh. yes. Okay, I just have to say, because I am sitting over here, and believe me, I'm not a dancer, but literally, we did a Jericho march at Morningside, yes. and we started seeing breakthrough at the ministry yes. in our personal lives. Yes. And literally, me and my sister Lori, we started, I said, I got to tell you the breakthrough. I literally started naming them. It's me, Lori, and Olivia. And I started jumping up and down, right. dancing. My other two little kids, Jackson and Natalie, they're just see the great thing about kids is they joined us. That's right. They started joining me and dancing, and we all literally marched around our house. But we were praising God. And I literally said, God, I'm dancing <laughs> because I could not contain the amount of joy and seeing God work, seeing yeah. the miracles right. of what He's doing. And so when you literally just said that, Emma, I'm like, oh my God, I had this thought. I cannot that day I was like, God, I'm literally standing here dancing and God's like, yep, but I gave you a four-year-old and a two-year-old who they look at you and they'll join right along with That's you. That's right. So it's just, it's so amazing. That he gives the joy. When you understand mm -hmm. what God is doing, mm -hmm. when you give him the glory, when That's you see right. the breakthrough, you Amen. know, so many of us, and this is what God, I just have to share this for, yes. I'm sorry, but no, I have go, to, you know, so many of God's been teaching me. He's like, you pray for the breakthrough, mm -hmm. you're interceding, you're praying. I give you the breakthrough mm -hmm. and you forget to praise. Yeah. You forget to come back to me. You forget you, you take it as if, wow, God, that was great. You did it. Good mm -hmm. job. And then we move on and you, ex mm -hmm. for the next expectation. That's right. But you know what the Lord showed me? He said, no, I just He's like, you build a spiritual, it's a spiritual altar. And every mm -hmm. time God has Good. been telling me, he's like, every time I do something, that's what I do. I said, God, if it's in my living room, right. if it's in my closet, I literally come to the spiritual mm -hmm. altar that's in my spirit and I bow before him yes. and I thank so him. Good. I thank him for what he's doing. Amen. And that's where the joy comes because yeah. I know I know that there was nothing inside mm -hmm. of us, nothing that this ministry can do right. to allow the blessings, the miracle to take place, but God. And this is why I'm telling you, you have to, mm -hmm. you have to empower yourself you through the really word, do. through the prophets, through truth and understand, guess what? Knowledge. We have to gain knowledge of the yeah, word of right. people who are going to be ministering to our souls, ministering us, teaching us, guiding us. How do we go through this life? Mm -hmm. How do we get through it, Lord? How do we not just get through it, 
Right. But how do we literally take everything that God has to offer us and run with it? Mm -hmm. And that's why we offer you. Guess what? We don't offer you teachings just to offer you teachings. That's right. We offer you because guess what? God has downloaded. Mm -hmm. God is speaking to the prophetic voices. He's speaking. He's downloading to the men and the women of God that he has placed. He's giving them the words to help unlock inside of you and I. Mm -hmm. What we need to accomplish the destiny in our lives, what we need to take off the blinders Mm -hmm. in our life. God is doing that through his prophets, through the men and women. So I urge you, I encourage you today. Don't just sit back. Don't miss out. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Don't miss out. out. Mm -hmm. $30 donation. That's a love gift. Mm -hmm. But this is powerful. This is a powerhouse woman of God. Mm -hmm who's going to minister to you. I believe that Emma is going to unlock yeah. the very thing that God, you've been asking God, yeah. you've been praying, you've been interceding. That's right. And I believe that God is getting ready to unlock that through the message. Praise God. That he wants to share with you. Yes. So we want you, you know, we have a few minutes left of this broadcast. You know, don't wait. Yeah. We want you to call us right now. 1-888-988-1588. Go to the website, jimbakershow.com. Mm-hmm. But for a $30 donation, you can yes. receive this amazing powerhouse teaching. Yes. For a 30, that, that's nothing. I'm sorry. I just have to say it. I'm like, guess what? God, you know what God told me? He's like, don't, don't devalue my woman. Don't devalue, don't, don't devalue what I'm giving the prophets. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But for a $30 love gift. And these are three anointed right. lessons for now. This Amen. is These are for right now. The Emma just ministered yes. on these DVDs. And it's a word for you for right now. And here's what I love, too, in, in these closing moments on this broadcast. Mm. And Emma's going to be back with us tomorrow. Yes. You do not want to miss one moment because there's so much more that she has to minister to you. And what I love to mm. see, Nana, is that... You, you know, you talked about how you and little Lori and the kids were dancing around the house. And Emma, when you just said it was so cute, how you just said, I have a feeling that some of you could be dancing around. I dance in my, my bedroom yes. closet area. The girl, the kids know. And the thing is that it's, it's the joy of the Lord is your strength. And what I have seen, because they have chosen joy. Yeah. I have seen such Amen. strength yeah. in you Amen. and little Lori, but right before my very eyes, they're just rising up. But you know, it's because they honor the Lord. And then that joy yes, that comes out it. of that, that has given Amen. them the strength for yes. all the behind the scenes yes. that goes Thank on, you. which is a lot. And, and to be here with you on a daily basis, which is, uh, is such, it's just so amazing. And it's just a precious opportunity that we don't take lightly we love being with you every single day and um right before we close i do want to just mention to emma's book yeah that uh the prophetic warrior we still have a few left yeah so if you didn't get on out last time get on it now That's get this right. book right now for 20 dollars, including shipping and handling to the ministry, like Monisela said, you can call us at 1-888-988-1588, or you can write us at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615, or you can go to the website, which is awesome, and that is at jimbakershow.com. And in just a minute, um, Emma's going to be with us tomorrow, so everybody, hang on. We just want to say goodbye for today, and tune in to tomorrow we love you so much and like jim always says at the end of every broadcast god loves you he really does and we love you too so bye bye for this broadcast and we'll see you tomorrow thank you emma 